Hey everybody, this is Laird of Garst Cotton, and today I want to make the video that I said I'd do a while back, which is basically talking about the five ways that the Ottoman Empire uh, spent the money that they uh, took from the Armenians during the Armenian Genocide through the temporary law of expropriation and confiscation. Um, before I get into that, I want to comment on um, how sparse the comments have been from deniers of the Armenian Genocide. You, you know, ever since I started you, the, this Armenian Genocide video thing, there have just been bombardments, have just been barraged by um, comments about how, like, it didn't really happen, and uh, here are all these statistics, which they never tell me where they get them from, et cetera, et cetera, and it's like a real bitch to go through each and every single comment and it consumes more time to go through each and every single comment because I really care about this topic and I want to make sure that I reach as many people as possible and it consumes a lot more time than making these videos making these videos is actually kind of a, a break from going through all these bloody comments but you know recently like you know within the past week there have only been you know a couple comments denying the Armenian genocide on my videos and that might be partly because I haven't made a video in, you know, maybe 15 days or something. Whatever, but um, anyway. Oh, yeah, and another thing. I want to comment on how the deniers of the Armenian Genocide never really address what I say in my videos. And I usually refer them to my proof videos. And... I have yet to see a comment that actually addresses the points that I say in those two videos, and I don't know what what to say, what to say about that because um, they they really seem to stay on the other videos, even though I tell them to go there. It's interesting. I don't know whether that's you know um, either I'm not interesting enough or they don't want to listen to my points, what I want to say, I don't know, but uh, whatever, I, I think, I, I treat it like I'm, I'm kind of making a point, maybe I'm making a difference, and it's my hope, and in general, in my life, what I'm doing right now in the summer, I'm trying to teach myself agricultural and environmental resource economics, I just um, check this out of the library, the reason is because I plan on going into the Peace Corps in a year, and I want to get learned in um, something that maybe I can apply while I'm over there. And maybe I can become a, become a more effective volunteer in the Peace Corps. You know, just trying to help the world out in my own special way. It's kind of what this YouTube video is about, too. I'm trying to help um, end the denial of the Armenian Genocide. And uh, I view that as a very important task, which I am capable of doing. Anyway, moving along, finally, a shameful act. This comes from a shameful act by Taner Akcham, his most recent book. And this is the five ways that the Armenians, that the, the Armenian money that was got, that was received from the auctions that the Ottoman Empire did forcibly and un unconstitutionally, as pointed out by Ahmed Riza. Um, and all of these things are basically telegrams uh, taken from the Ottoman archives and all of these telegrams will be put into the annotations uh, somewhere maybe right right here on the screen or so I'll try and lean over here so that way the annotations can appear and all of you can become informed anyway the first one to extend the Muslim bourgeoisie much of the Armenian property left behind left behind it, yeah, right it wasn't really left behind it was taken from them forcibly was given to Muslim individuals or companies for the purpose of creating a Muslim bourgeoisie class often without demand for any payment or on favorable terms including installment plans what's interesting about this is that um, much of the Muslim community during this time uh, was kind of in poverty 
and it's interesting that they want and you know overall you know i'm not going to say that all the armenians were you know wealthy wealthier beyond all imagination but generally speaking the armenians were kind of better off uh, than the armenians they enjoyed better trade um they had better education uh pretty good skills they were able to do carpentry and they had farms and whatnot good literacy rates and the muslim community overall wasn't that great it was actually pretty bad so it was very interesting that they said all right we're going to take your wealth it's kind of like redistributing the wealth kind of a social revolution except really the wrong kind of revolution anyway there are five telegrams to support this cl um, the first point which is to extend the Muslim bourgeoisie. And, you know, it should be noted that th I'm just commenting on the Ottoman Empire's policy of, well, I want to create a Muslim bourgeoisie. Giving people money doesn't create a bourgeoisie. What will increase the standard of living 100% of the time is education, you know, or uh, maybe investing in capital which is like uh, industry modernization they were kind of doing that buying American stuff but really you got to start with education in my opinion two to provide for the needs of new immigrants property was also distributed to Muslims who settled in the areas formerly inhabited by Armenians this resettlement goal was openly declared by the con by the cabinet in the regulations decreed on the 30th of May 1915 and the 10th of June. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, something that uh, most people already know. So, yeah, there are three telegrams that support this. This is all going to be right here. Um, three, to meet the needs of the military. This one I thought was interesting. One of the most important uses made of Armenian property was to help the armed forces. This was done by commandeering buildings, which were then used for military operations and through the sale of commodities produced by Armenians. The policy of using abandoned property for military purposes was not, however, confined to that owned by Armenians. Abandoned Greek property met with the same fate. Yep. Uh huh. Four, to cover the expense of the deportations. This was very interesting. Uh, records in our possession show that income received from the sale of Armenian properties was used to compensate the state for expenses associated with deporting their owners. <coughs> so, yeah, I, I thought that was very interesting how they, they needed to take the money from the Armenians in order to deport them, you know, partly in order to deport them. And, uh, yeah, then the fifth one and the last one is to cover other state needs. In some circumstances, Armenian-owned buildings were used as prisons or for other state requirements. What follows are several examples of exchanges about the need for prison facilities. Now, 